we are um, doing very much the same thing, just accessing the data a little differently. Okay, so close that up. And then we also have to, oops, where are we? Sorry. So we give that, and then we give the game response the amount dot amount. So these are these are the only two things we pass back to the 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 game engine. We say, hey, you asked me to to fight. I rule I rolled my dice and it turns out I fought for X. And and the amount, and here's my message related to that, and then here's the amount. So, let's go back into the game response real quick. And now we want to introduce this idea of, can I, um, can I cancel, can I fail, right? So we can say, boop, boop, public bool was successful get and set. So, pretty pretty straightforward. So if, in this case, the, the actor is disabled and they get the request to fight, we want to leave the amount as it is. So potentially could take this out of the decision logic. Let me give this some breathing room. And then up here, or also here, we can say actually we'll do this here. So in our object initializer, we're going to go ahead and say that the was successful is equal to true. So we're going to assume the response is successful unless we're told otherwise. And then here, if the actor is disabled, we're going to say game response dot was successful is equal to false. And then we'll give a different game message is equal to um, string dot format Canadian 2 says I agree for the most part about the C sharp game engine um, but it doesn't let the programmer do the garbage collecting or collection like C++ that is 100% true and later on we're probably going to do the flyaway pattern that shows how to uh, uh, efficiently and effectively share resources across the game. You are always going to hit that, those, those upper limits, though. I don't think anyone's going to say that C++ is going to outperform C Sharp. And if you really want to do the garbage collecting in C Sharp, you're going to have to really fight to get your hands on it. And even then, mm. um, which is another reason why we're doing this as a as a text-based game with a very limited kind of scope. So, um, and I'll talk about that for just a second. So, at scale, everything breaks, right? And that point is going to be higher or lower depending on how well you can optimize. And there's a, there's a, there's a, very, there's a very solid upper limit on how much C sharp can be optimized for a lot of these needs. And then that limit is just higher for things like C++, especially when it comes to arithmetic and such, and crunching numbers and doing a lot of 3D um, <coughs> rendering or analysis, right? What was the vector of this bullet when, when it, and where did it fracture and then all those things. So that would be super ambitious for us to want to write an entire game using C sharp that was, that was very complex. We could do it, and people do do it. Um, 
you are going to see that, let's say that you had a server out there, and you're like, hey, my game engine can handle 50 users at a time before we just hit that limit where the game engine just can't handle anymore. Well, if your game engine can handle 100 users, then you're, buy you're buying half as many servers or leasing half as many servers. So there's, there's good reasons for that. We're using text, and to be honest, um, I don't have so many concerns with hitting an upper limit for our needs, um, but fully agree. Yeah, you definitely want to take that into account when you're architecting things. That idea of scale, that idea of DevOps, which we're all having to be a little more familiar with. Uh, Eschkatite, how you doing? I hope I said that correctly this time. Eschkatite, man, so bad. Oh, forgive me. All right. So back to the good stuff, because we got about 20 minutes left, and we are just starting to rock and roll. All right, so in the case of being disabled and tries to fight, we want to say that the game response was not successful, and the message was just struggles to move. And this dot name, so the name of whoever we are. Okay. So we're doing the same thing here that we saw in other places in the application. We're starting to define this algorithm in line. And, it's, and, and every time we do this, every time we see a place where we're going to have to do the same thing three or four times in a switch statement, or anywhere for that matter, it should immediately raise a red flag and say, here's a point we can refactor in the future. But for proofing out the algorithm, there's, a, there's no better time than than now, and there's no, no better place than here, which I think is a song, but it's true. Oh no. Ashkatite says that I was watching a drunk guy code and could not get the name right. Give me the phonetic, give me the phonetics one more time. Just let me know how to say it, and you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna lure you with some. Keep coming back and tell until I get it right. Uh, and I promise, I promise not to mess it up on purpose. Okay. So this is this is this is the idea of the state class, and it's so flexible and it's so kind of straightforward as a design pattern that the the difficulty in implementing it ends up being where do I put it, where do I decide to do these things. So you want to give a lot of consideration and thought as to how do I. How much functionality do I put into um, my, 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 my abstraction, right? my state met, uh, class, and how much do I leverage from other parts of my system? So that, uh, that, that question is really what makes it more of an advanced design pattern. The actual code you write is still very limited, but it, it's, it, it starts moving you into these design patterns where you, you have a lot of opportunity to, to do an anti-pattern. right? which is where you have the right pattern and the wrong implementation, or the, a, a brilliant implementation and the wrong pattern. Okay, so this is it. So we've introduced a few things here. We've got a state, we have a place where we can use it, um, a place to intercept that fight command, and then also add some functionality to our game response. So what we also wanna do, all this, Coming over to our player, and we've got a constructor, and we new up some stuff. Uh, later on, we start much later on. If we get there and we start pulling in users, um, this will all be things that we we already know, so we don't need to we don't we don't we don't need to make them fresh. Um, and we're probably using we'll probably end up using our default uh, constructor for those queries, but right now we're separating our our commands and our queries into two different channels. So right now we're only concerned with our commands. Okay, so game object type player game object state. Oops. You should have that, right? Hang on. Just double check our sanity. 
Yes. I knew, I knew you did. Okay. And they're in play. I'm just going to assume that. I'm going to say the actor state. And comes from actor states dot alive. So let's just go ahead and set some some basic states for our player. Escatite. Escatite. Correct me. If I'm wrong, you gotta tell me. I'll never learn. I'm stubborn. Okay. So we've added in, sorry for the jumping around. We've added in our, our basic states. And if we go back to our base actor, we've also added in some some very simple decision logic. Now when we go to refactor, we're also going to start thinking about, well, how can we efficiently handle several states? Because we don't want to do a bunch of if statements here. We could, or maybe we do, but we, we just want to think about it. We want to say, is this the most efficient way to, to write this algorithm, right? This, this little bit of decision logic. Do we want to do if statements or is it something better? We don't know right now, but we do know something we want to think about. Okay. So, I think we got everything we need to then take one more step back. And inside of our program, right? If you remember, we have our hive mind, which is our game engine or game master. We might change that to game master as we start making this more and more robust. And then our hive mind news up a world for us. We won't go into that right now because we showed it. We showed it quite a bit in the past, and we'll see it and we might talk about it. Um, so we want that world, and so just give me the first room. Um, we've got some stuff in that room, so we say give me the first player. Typically, uh, this would be you, so whoever you are, uh, but we don't have a you yet, so we just, got, we just grab Gary. Uh, we add an inventory item to Gary for test charm. Then we get Beth, we draw the room, we draw the status bar, and then we execute a game request, and we display the command. So we're doing some things here. Let's go into our hive mind of execute. Okay, so we had heal, fight, repair, negotiate. Those are the four things we can do in our world. Uh, Canadian 2 asked, do you have experience with wind forms with WPF? I do. Not as much as I would like. I'm, pr I'm predominantly a web developer. I do, I do do full stack development. So HTML, CSS, the business logic stuff you see here, database dev. Um, aside from some light apps, just haven't really gotten on the, the desktop apps train or the WPF train. But that could change. So, um, inside of fight, or inside of any of these actions, we get a response. So a request comes in, we set up the request um, as appropriate, or we just pull out some things as appropriate, and then we say, hey, the response, is gonna, the response to that request is going to be whatever the sender executes and returns. So, doop doop doop. That's all we have. What we want to do here, and we did fights, so we're going to inject it right here. What we want to do here is we got the response. And remember, we said if the response is successful, right? Or, or was successful. And so we can say if response was successful, then and only then. Do we want to apply the damage to the target? So super cool. So by implementing the state pattern, 